Uh, yes, my name is Jose Peña, and I'm going to present our contribution to the conference, which is entitled, as you can see, an inclusion optimal algorithm for chain graph structure learning. This is joint work with uh, Doug Sontag, which is a PhD student I supervise, and uh, Jens Nielsen. Uh, here we have the outline for the talk. Uh, first, I will introduce chain graphs. Then I will introduce what we call the extended uh, mixed conjecture for chain graphs. Then I will present uh, our uh, learning algorithm for chain graphs, which we call CKS. And I'll show you some experimental results, and I'll wrap it up with a summary. Okay. So what is a chain graph? Well, it's a graph, as you can see up here. Here you have an example. It's a graph that contains directed and undirected edges and doesn't contain any semi-cyclic, uh, semi-directed uh, uh, semi cycle. A semi-directed cycle is, is a path from a node to itself that contains at least one directed edge, and all the directed edges in the path should be in the same direction. So for instance, this one here is not a semi-directed cycle. Okay? As any other graphical model, uh, it is used to represent uh, independences, to represent a set of independences, which uh, I call an independence model. So the independence model represented by a chain graph G is going to be denoted in this talk I of G, and it's going to be a set of triplets of this form, which are uh, independences. So this means that uh, in G, G is representing the independence of X and Y given set. X, Y, and Z are uh, sets, of, sets of nodes. Um, I'm not going to explain in detail how the independences are represented by, by the chain graph, it's enough to know that missing edges in the chain graph correspond to independences. And which independences these missing edges correspond to depends on which interpretation of chain graphs uh, you are using. In this talk, I'm using uh, the classical interpretation of chain graphs, also called Lorich and Bermuth Friedenberg in interpretation. Okay, missing edges correspond to, uh, to independences. So now one may wonder why do we want to study uh, chain graphs? Why don't we just stick to Bayesian networks, which are a subset or subfamily of chain graphs? They just contain directed edges. Well, the reason is that chain graphs are much more expressive. Um, they can represent many more independence models. For instance, if we just consider 13 random variables or nodes, and we consider all the independence models that a chain graph with 13 nodes can represent, then only 4% of those, or those independence models can be represented by a Bayesian network. The remaining 96% of the models are pure chain graph uh, models, independence models. So they are more expressive, but of course they are more difficult to, to deal with and to work with. Uh, and for instance, we don't have any correct uh, learning algorithm under my uh, assumptions. And this is exactly what we try to do with our contribution, to develop such a, a learning algorithm. As uh, it happens with Bayesian networks, it may be the case that two different chain graphs, G and H, represent the same independence model. So they are called equivalent. Okay? There is a characterization, but we are not going to, to need it in the talk, so we just ignore it. Okay. So uh, in order to obtain a correct algorithm, learning algorithm uh, under uh, mild assumptions, I need a result which resembles this result we have for, for, for DAX, for Bayesian networks, this, uh, the proof of mixed conjecture. So I'm going to show you what the original mixed conjecture looks like. It was proven later on in 2002, it was proposed in 97, proven in 2002, and in our paper, we uh, do exactly the same, but for chain graphs. And we need this result in order to obtain the learning algorithm I'm, go I'm going to show you later on. So the original con conjecture, rem uh, recall, applies to DAX, to Bayesian networks, says that the given two Bayesian networks, G and H, such that one, the independence model represented by H is included in the independence model represented by G. So G H represents a subset of the independences G represents. The conjecture states that we can transform G into H by a sequence of directed H additions and reversals. And after each operation in the sequence, G will be a still a DAG, and this condition will be still satisfied. This is the original condition, and after each modification, the condition is still valid. So this was a conjecture proposed in 97 by Mick, uh, and in 2002 it was proven to be correct. 
But Chikarin, he uh, didn't just prove the conjecture, he gave an algorithm to actually modify G into H. Uh, what we do here is to extend this conjecture to chain graphs and prove that uh, it uh, actually holds. So the extended conjecture looks like this. So given two chain graphs, G and H, such that the independence model of H is a subset of the independence model of G, the conjecture states that a G can be transformed into H by a sequence of directed and undirected H additions and some other operations that are called feasible splits and mergings. And I'll show you an example in a minute. After each operation in the sequence, G is a chain graph and this condition is valid also after each operation in the sequence. As I said, we prove this uh, conjecture and as Chicken indeed, we propose uh, an algorithm to actually transform G into H. Okay. Uh, yeah, a few words about these two operations, which are the equivalent of cover arc reversals in DAX, but in this case for, for uh, chain graphs. So these are operations that modify a chain graph into a chain graph that is equivalent to the previous one. So they change the topology, but they don't change the independence model represented. And uh, these operations were proposed by student and collaborators in 2009, and uh, as I said, they were uh, proven to uh, change the topology, but not the independence model. So here you have an example. We have a chain graph. We have here a connectivity component, which is a maximal uh, connected and directed graph, and a feasible split of this component produces this other chain graph. These two lines, one, two, three, two, two, four, have been converted into uh, arrows, and now this component has been split into two smaller components, one and two. If you go from this chain graph to the other one, then you are doing a feasible merging. Okay. So you can split a component or merge two smaller components into a bigger component. These two uh, chain graphs are equivalent. They represent the same independences. Okay, good. So now we have this conjecture. For chain graphs, we have proven that uh, it holds. Why is this important for uh, developing a learning algorithm? Well, this is what I'm going to explain in this slide. So we say that the chain graph G includes a probability distribution if the uh, independences represented by the graph are true in the distribution. Okay. We say that the, uh, the G is actually inclusion optimal with respect to the distribution P if the following two uh, conditions are true. First, it has to include the distribution. Second, it has to include the distribution as tightly as possible with as many independences as possible. There cannot be another chain graph F that also includes the distribution and that is included in G. Okay? So G is inclusion optimal if it includes the distribution it contains only true independences and as many of them as possible. So this is actually the kind of chain graphs we want to learn from data. Okay. And uh, what mixed conjecture, the proof of, of the extended uh, mixed, mixed conjecture allow us to, to say is that given any chain graph H that includes the distribution, we can transform it into an inclusion optimal chain graph by just performing local operations like removing edges and making these feasible splits and margins. Okay. So now if we are able to find a chain graph that includes the, uh, the distribution, for instance, the complete graph, then I can transform it into an inclusion optimal chain graph by just removing edges and uh, performing these uh, feasible splits and margin. Okay. So now the task is find a chain graph H that includes the distribution. And then, because of the proof of mixed conjecture, I can find the uh, inclusion optimal, uh, one of the inclusion optimals um, chain graphs. So now, how do we find this H, a chain graph that includes the distribution? Well, for that, I'm going to assume that our distribution, P, satisfies the so-called composition property. This property is here. It says that if in the distribution, x and y are independent given set, and x and w are independent given set, then x and y union w must be independent given set. Okay? This uh, property is not true for every single uh, probability distribution. An example is the x or. However, there are interesting families of distributions that satisfy the property. For instance, every single regular Gaussian probability distribution satisfies the property no matter whether it is faithful or not to a chain graph. Okay. 
So it is a rather mild uh, assumption. Um, why is, is it important? Well, it's important because now it allows me to start with the empty chain graph and add edges to T's empty chain graph. And at some point, it guarantees that I have T's guy H, T's chain graph that includes the probability distribution. I will start with the empty graph. I will keep on adding edges. And at some point, I will include the uh, probability distribution. And therefore, the uh, mixed conjecture will take over and find an, an inclusion optimal chain graph for P. Okay. So um, to give you a little bit more details, if at some point, for instance, my graph is telling that X and Y are independent given set, but this independence is not true in P, then we don't include P because we have a false uh, independence in the graph, represented in the graph. Due to the composition property, I know that if this is true, then there are two nodes in my graph that are represented as independent given set, but they are dependent in the probability distribution. Therefore, if now I add an edge between A and B, then I'm going to get closer to including the uh, probability distribution. So thanks to the composition property, I can start with the empty graph. I can just add one single edge at a time, and at some point, I will include the distribution. Okay. And then, as I said, mix and conjecture will take over, and we'll find a, an, an inclusion optimal um, chain graph. If we combine these two ideas, we produce the algorithm we have developed uh, that we call CKS. Of course, I'm not going to go through uh, every single detail. I just wanted to highlight some, some uh, parts, like, uh, uh, yeah, the algorithm starts with the empty graph, as I said. Then we iterate through these lines, where, as you can see, we just add or remove edges, single edges. These are the only operations we perform there. Of course, we add or remove if some independences uh, are true or false in the distribution. Um, if at some point we cannot add or remove more edges, we don't just stop. What we are going to do is move to another chain graph that is equivalent to the current one by performing some random feasible splits and merge and continue adding or removing edges. Okay. At some point, I cannot add or remove any more edge from uh, to any uh, chain graph that is equivalent to the current one, then I stop. Okay. So this is how the algorithm works in, in a nutshell. What we prove in our article is that this algorithm uh, is going to find a chain graph that is inclusion optimal with respect to the probability distribution we are dealing with, uh, as long as this distribution satisfies the composition property. Uh, if we are going to implement this in practice, then we have to um, note two things. First, that, uh, well, as I said before, you add or remove edges depending on whether some independences are true or false in P. But of course, P is something you don't have access to in, in, in practice. So what we are going to do is replace these, uh, these um, uh, checks for independence in P with a hypothesis test. Because we don't have access to P, we usually have access to a finite uh, sample from, from P. And the second thing we have to do is uh, line two should be approximated. Because line two says you should stop when you have checked all the uh, chain graphs that are equivalent to the current one, and you cannot add or remove any more edge. In practice, we are not going to check every single chain graph that is equivalent to the uh, current one. We are going to check just a large number, and then we just uh, stop. Okay? Okay, and now what I'm going to show you are some experimental results. We compare our algorithm against uh, LCD, which is the latest algorithm for learning chain graphs. Uh, it was uh, introduced and uh, presented in 2008. Uh, it's published in Journal of Machine Learning Research. And the main difference between our algorithm and, and CKS is that um, we just assume the composition property, which is much milder than the faithfulness assumption, which is what LCD needs to, to guarantee that it is asymptotically correct. Okay. So this algorithm is asymptotically correct if the learning data is sampled from a probability distribution P that is faithful to some chain graph. So the algorithm assumes that the data comes from a distribution, and that distribution has exactly the same independences as some chain, gra some chain graph. Yeah, so this is the faithfulness assumption. 
We, this is a rather strong assumption. We don't uh, make this assumption now algorithm. We just assume the composition property, which is much my, uh, milder. So in our experiments, we, it, would, it, would, it would have been unfair to compare our algorithm and LCD if we just assume the composition property, uh, because, well, our algorithm would have written uh, LCD very easily. So what we did was to just uh, consider uh, faithful distributions in our experiment. So every single data set I'm going to mention comes from a probability distribution that is faithful to some chain graph. So this is just to uh, make the comparison fair between uh, CKS and LCD, okay? And here we have um, some preliminary experiments we did. We took one of these samples and we ran both algorithms 100 times. So the uh, red squares uh, correspond to our algorithm and the blue dots to uh, LCD. And we can see that uh, there are multiple local optimal solutions. So almost every single run of the algorithm ends in a different solution. So we think that it's not wise to just run the algorithm once and return the solution to the user. What we are going to do is run the algorithm many times, like 100, pick up the best solution out of these 100 and give this back to the user. So this is something we, um, this is how we, we are going to, to run our experiments. Okay. Uh, the second observation we can get from these preliminary experiments is that uh, the red squares, uh, which correspond to our algorithm, uh, usually get higher uh, precision. Okay. Precision is uh, the fraction of independences in the model learned that are true, that are in the sample chain graph. Okay. While the um, LCD algorithm usually gets higher recall. Recall is the fraction of the uh, independences in the sample chain graph that are also in the uh, chain graph you have obtained, you have learned. Okay. So it seems that the two algorithms behave quite differently. Our algorithm goes for precision, you won't prioritize uh, recall. Uh, we are happy with, with our algorithm. We, we uh, want to have higher precision. This means that the number that we will obtain fewer false independences in, in our chain graphs. And this is the goal of, uh, of structural learning. You don't want to get a chain graph that has many uh, false independences. You just want to get true independences, high precision. So we are happy with, with our algorithm. Now we uh, run some more thorough experiments. Uh, what we did was, um, consider 10 uh, randomly obtained uh, chain graph structures with uh, 10 and 20 nodes and with two and five uh, neighbors per node. So we consider small and medium networks, sparse and a little bit more denser networks. We then parameterize these chain graphs to obtain uh, Gaussian probability distributions and we sample them and we got samples of size 130,000, small and big samples. Then what we did is run 100 times the two algorithms on each of these samples, choose the best run out of these 100 runs, and report the average over these 10 best runs, each of them corresponding to one of the chain graph structures we consider. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by choose the best run? Well, as I said before, I'm going to consider precision and recall. Uh, these are my performance uh, measures. Okay. So best in terms of precision and recall. And, and, and recall is the fraction of, of independences in the sample network that you uh, recover. Precision is the fraction of independences in your model, in the learned model that are true independences. Okay. And the results can be seen here, up here in, in this table. The different um, scenarios. 10 nodes, 20 nodes, two neighbors on average per node, a small sample, big sample. Okay. So the uh, first conclusion we can draw from the table is that LCD uh, trades precision for recall. Okay. So we have seen before that uh, for LCD, the, uh, it seems that recall is more important. So the models obtained by LCD usually have um, larger recall. So you can see here recall for LCD is, there is only one exception, I think, at some point. Uh, yeah, well, LCD obtains in general better recall than CKS. Okay. 
And the, uh, of course, the opposite is true for CCAS. CCAS traits recall for precision. So if we check here, we can see that the precision for the output we obtain from CCAS is always higher. Yeah. And uh, we are happy with, as I said before, with these results. We uh, think that uh, the goal of, uh, of a structure learning is finding a chain graph that includes as many true independences as possible. Therefore, we prefer uh, precision. Therefore, we, we are happy with, with this result. Uh, our explanation of why LCD goes for, for recall and CKs for precision is the following. So, uh, although the data comes from a faithful distribution, when you have a sample, there is no, no guarantee that the, the sample, the empirical distribution of the sample uh, is faithful to any, any uh, chain graph. Uh, but still, LCD insists in making this assumption that the data, the empirical distribution is, is faithful and therefore it's more aggressive uh, when, when uh, running. Uh, while um, CKS is more cautious because it doesn't make uh, any faithful assumption. So now a summary, uh, con contributions. We have uh, extended mixed conjecture. We have proven that they, it holds. We have developed an algorithm that is uh, correct under the composition property. This assumption, this pro composition property assumption is not as uh, strong as the faithfulness assumption. Uh, the conjecture hopefully will be used by other people to develop uh, similar learning algorithms. Uh, we have seen in the experiment that CKS uh, prefers uh, precision uh, rather than recall, which is desirable. Future work, we have seen that we run the uh, uh, algorithm 100 times. We pick up the best solution in terms of precision and recall. This is only uh, possible if you have access to the uh, chain graph you have sampled the data from. Of course, this is unrealistic. So how we are going to get around this problem in practice? Well. Two uh, solutions. One is to uh, compute re precision and recall not with the uh, distribution you sample, but with the empirical distribution of the sample. The second solution is to uh, score each of these 100 networks by using something like BAC, and then pick up the best. Um, using a score inside the algorithm to guide the search is impractical. Uh, but it is uh, doable to, to score the uh, 100 networks uh, at the end of the day and pick up the, the best. So we, uh, we don't plan to use BAC within the search algorithm, but as a post-processing step to rank the 100 solutions we, we obtain and pick up the best. Okay, so this is uh, everything I wanted to tell you. Thanks for, for your attention. So what kind of test does LCD use to for edge inclusion and uh, exclusion? So is, that, is there a big contrast to what kind of test you are using in the uh, research? Do you mean the statistical yes. hypothesis test? Yes. Uh, we use the same oh, test. It's, it's the, the same, same test. We uh, reuse actually quite a lot of the code uh, um, made available by the LCD authors, like uh, for sampling, for, uh, we reuse quite a lot of the code. Other questions? Um, question. Is there any sense in looking at the AMP interpretation of the chain graph? Uh, yes, we have also studied that interpretation quite a lot. And uh, unfortunately, mixed conjecture does not hold for, for the AMP interpretation. So we have found counter examples where yeah, it doesn't hold. So things are tougher for, for that interpretation. Yes. Other questions? No? Well, thank you again. Mm -hmm.